it's Jasmine and today I'm bringing you guys a full face of first impressions. I am so excited to bring you guys this look because this is honestly my favorite. Blue is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite colors. So whenever I get a chance to do blue, all blue, it's a good day. It's literally such a good day. So I hope you guys all enjoy this really easy tutorial as well as giving you guys insights on some new products that just launched and some undiscovered products that I feel like no one really talks about. So let's get into the video and let's get started. So last night I cleaned out my entire vanity and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to keep. I listed some stuff on Mercari if you guys want to buy some stuff off me. I do have my Mercari link in the description box below. I reorganized a lot of things and I got a lot of PR so I wanted to test out everything here in this video for you guys and see if I like it or not. So today I am going to go into my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Now this has been sitting in my drawer for a really long time and it actually got hit in because I have a drawer literally where I just put things in I don't organize it and yesterday I finally organized it and I found this again so today I'm gonna use it and I have been using the Tatcha primer in my last vacation that I just got back from and the Tatcha primer was absolutely amazing it was just so good at smoothing out the skin and really filling in those pores and I don't know my foundation application just looked so amazing and Ooh, I loved it. So I'm gonna go in with this one. I heard that this is a dupe, but honestly, I'm not sure because I've never used it. So far, I can tell you it is blending out a little bit more clear, you see on the chin. I mean, it does have a little bit of a white cast, but I think Tatcha has more of that white cast. So to me, this already seems like it's going on a little bit more clear than that. So, so far so good. It honestly looks flawless on the skin. My skin looks real good right now. I can honestly just not film this tutorial and just walk out the house like this. But I do want to go in with foundation. Now, I have already tested out all of the new foundations that I currently have, which is the Pure Love Your Selfie, Urban Decay Stay Naked, as well as the Shot Masse one. So, if you could just go back to maybe like two weeks ago, then you'll see those reviews. But honestly, today I want to do something a little different because CoverGirl sent me some of their newest concealers. So these ones are called their True Blend Undercover Concealer and I kind of want to use this as foundation today. And I also have another concealer. This one is by First Aid Beauty. This is their Bendy Avocado Concealer. I have been using this for quite some time now. Um, so I just wanted to use these up as foundations because I'm just feeling adventurous today. So just by me holding these up, I just feel like honey is the closest to my skin tone. So I'm going to use honey all over. This one is in one of those similar formats as like e.l.f. camo, tart shape tape with a big old foot. Uh, honey seems to be a pretty good match, a little too neutral. It's weird because on camera I look really white, but in person this looks a little orange. Which is really strange to me and I... I don't know why, but I can never find my perfect foundation shade in the CoverGirl line. And I know they have their True Blend um, foundation that they launched, the one I think with like 50 shades like last year. I know they launched that and still I could not find my shade. So uh, there is that and this concealer is not a complete match to me, but we will fix it because I do have a new banana powder that I want to try out today. And you guys know, once we put that banana powder on the face, it's going to look so good. That is literally my trick to making any foundation match me. So far though, coverage wise, it actually covered really, really well. This is definitely borderline full coverage. Oh my goodness, I need a close-up mirror. Yeah, the acne scars here completely covered. Under eyes obviously covered. Um, I could use a little bit more because I am pretty tired. The acne on my forehead completely covered. I think this is a wow. This is actually really nice. Oh my gosh, as a foundation too. Now I'm going to use the Bendy concealer and I don't know what shade I have in this one. This is 2.5 so this is definitely one of their lighter shades. 
Um, it is a lot more yellow than the other concealer that I put on my face here. It's not too much lighter than my skin, so it still gives me like a natural finish. And I think I'm just going to do the under eye and chin today. So I have been using the First Aid Beauty Concealer for maybe like a week. And so far, it's been giving me like really good coverage. It's like a lightweight formula but still medium buildable. So it's nice. It doesn't seem to be creasing a lot, but it does crease on me. But honestly, once you set it in place, like pretty much bake it in place, then obviously it's not going to budge. It's still really good, but would I put more money down for it? Probably not. It's still something that is worth a shot and worth a try, but I'm not sure it's something that I would 100% recommend. Now I did talk about banana powder, so I have the CoverGirl True Blends Banana Powder, and I'm just going to go ahead and twist this open. Oh, you do get a little powder puff. That's cute. Doesn't really look like it'll do much for me though. So I'm just going to take this with my Juno & Co Rose Sponge. I do have an affiliate link if you want to support me. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and set my face with this. I really like this sponge in particular with powder because it takes it all and then just disperses it all on the face. Then I'm going to take a really big fluffy brush and then just brush it off. I need some warmth on my face, so I'm going to grab this Contour and Highlight Palette from Makeup Revolution. This is the Roxaurus Collaboration. I'm going to start off with the lightest contour shade and apply that onto the forehead. I feel like my forehead always needs some type of bronzy or contour color there because she just looks so pale. I don't know why. Alright, so I'm going to leave it like this for now. I know it's not quite blended, but I just need something on my face so I don't look like a white ghost. I'm going to go ahead and do my brows. Now, I do have a brand new brow pomade. This is by Salon Perfect. It is their done-in-one brow pomade in the shade Dark Brown. It is actually a dry pomade. It's not as waxy as, like, Anastasia, and it's definitely not as pigmented as Anastasia's. Um, it's just... I don't know, it feels like it's not really going to come off my brows, which is nice, but I just feel like through time it will dry out a lot faster, so I really don't know how to feel about this. The color though is pretty good, um, it does look a lot lighter in the little tube here, but I mean it came off really good, so there's not much I could really say. I'm going to lock these bad boys in place with my CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow in the shade Medium. I love how small the brush is and I love how it doesn't take up a lot of brow product because I noticed that with a lot of brow gels, when you get too much, especially if it's a colored brow gel, it just gunks up in the brow and it doesn't look that great, but this is honestly dispersing beautifully. My brows look full. Medium's a great shade. It's not too dark. Ooh, this one's nice. It might be a new favorite. I don't know. I love brow gels. So I have this amazing and fun palette from Makeup Revolution. This is their Integrity Wild Animal Palette. This is the one with the zebra stripe in the back. And this palette looks so fun. I love the array of mattes as well as shimmers in here. It's definitely the right amount for me. So I think today I'm going to take this matte green and apply this right in the first half of my eyelid. I am just gonna switch off between eyes in today's tutorial because I want to make sure that I'm not using a lot of brushes and I just wanna use just a few because a lot of them are dirty. Now I'm taking this cobalt blue. This is so pretty. Ooh. Wow. It's really hard to actually find a drugstore palette that has a matte cobalt blue. Most of the time they're all shimmery and I think it's easier to make shimmers than mattes. I'm going to switch to a Sigma E25 and I am going to take this green and blend it up. 
So my whole purpose was to pack on all the shades and then blend it out later because I find that it's a little easier, especially when you're working with bolder colors, to just start off bold and then just fade it off a little later. And with that same brush, we're gonna do the same with the blue. If you grab too much, just start where you packed on and then slowly bring it up. Just keep working. I'm using circular motions to blend in everything. Um, windshield wiper motions will create a little too much fallout, especially with darker shades in general. Um, not just this palette. Um, I've just noticed that from just the many attempts with these colorful shadows. I'm gonna take this shimmery teal and apply this into the inner corner first. This is not going to be the only shade I'm applying. I want this to be a base because I want something a little bit more like white and stark to be there as well. And then here I go with more of like a white shade where I'm still using the same palette by the way. So everything is just super easy. For my lower lash line, we're going to do something a little different. So as you can see here, I have my blue eyeliner as well as my teal eyeliner. Now instead of having the blue on this side for the lower lash line, I'm going to switch it so that we are going to line the lower lash line like this. So I did not do it perfect at all because we're going to go right on top of the eyeshadow. So I'm going to go back into a really small brush and then just repeat the same process as I did on the upper eyelid all the way down to the lower lash line. So everything with this eyeshadow palette blended out really easy and the fallout that I did have wiped away so smooth so that's a good thing to note about the powder that was on the face. It really set in place really fast. Now honestly you don't get a lot of uh, fallout within the palette either and I don't know just everything blended out the way I wanted it to. This is an eye look that I envisioned and it came out perfectly so this is definitely a palette that I would a hundred percent recommend this is so good if you love playing with color I mean here it is it is just an all-in-one and I probably would not have purchased it if it wasn't sent to me simply because of this exterior I'm just not a big like animal print person but I mean this palette is just to die for it's so good now I don't have any new mascara so I'm just gonna go in with one that I'm just going to use up this is by pure it's their fully charged mascara you know what is so funny I plan to film a back to school video today and here I am with this bright ass green and blue smoky eye I mean, girl, if you want to, like, by all means do it because there has been times where I showed up to school with the green cut crease. It's all preference, you know, like, no one's there to tell you no. Just do it. Whatever makes you happy. As I get into this weird position of applying my mascara, this mascara isn't the best. It definitely is a basic mascara. It will give you length and volume, but there is nothing so wowing about it you know I definitely can find way better at the drugstore and I don't know there's just something with me and like high-end mascaras where I just feel like it's a waste of money because you're supposed to rotate through them so quickly I literally just spent like five minutes trying to figure out what lashes I wanted to wear and lo and behold I chose one of my natural ones because I wanted the eyeshadow to really peek through so these ones are shot Miss A Jackie definitely a really good pick and they're just so fresh they're wispy um, they go with literally everything so if you want to get these what are you waiting for so now that the eyes are out of the way, let's go back to the face and let's go back in with this palette. I am glad that I decided to go in with more of a, a lighter contour in the beginning just so I could deepen it up a little bit more. I just feel like this calls for a very structured face and good thing this is a contour palette because that is exactly what that's for. I'm going to go in with a smaller domed brush and I'm going to go into the second darkest shade in here. I mean, there's only four shades. I'm just taking the shade right after the light one to really sculpt that face. And I'm starting at the cheekbones this time because I really want that sunken in hollow cheekbone look as if I'm malnourished. <laughs> 
a malnourished sea witch. Ursula who? Don't know her. When you contour your face, you're actually adding shadows. So these colors are a little bit more cool tone than a bronzer palette. Typically, I do go for a bronzer palette, but I really want that sculpted look today. So we are just continuing to build in that depth by going in a little darker each layer. Now, I am slowly putting this on and blending at the same time, just going in circular motions to blend those colors seamlessly. For the nose, I kind of just run my brush over the nose bridge because I don't like anything too harsh there. I find that in pictures, it doesn't look that great, so I just completely disregard the actual contouring and I just dust whatever's left on my brush right over. A little bit on the chin as well. And we are also going to play with a blush palette. This is the brand new Catrice and Iman blush palette. I do have all three of her palettes. Um, but today I want to play with this one. This one just seems really fun, bright. Um, I do want to go in with Alexandria, which has a little bit of shimmer. And I'm just going to put this pretty low, not quite on my cheekbone, um, but definitely in that same contour area. This is just to further the illusion that my cheekbones are more sunken in than they naturally are. I do have a brand new highlight from CoverGirl. This is called their True Blend Super Stunner Hyper Glow. And this one is in the shade Pearl Crush. This one is more of like a champagne-y gold type shade. Not quite pearl, because when I think of pearl, I think of pink. So I'm going to go ahead and again, starting off pretty low. I'm just going to apply this onto the cheek area. This looks so bright. Oh. Once you blend it out, it does start blending into the skin, looking more like sweat. Still very pretty though. Wow. Oh, and this is very interesting. I'm like going back and forth into the mirror. And typically pearl shades, because they are a little bit more pink, they look a little ashy when I look straight forward, especially in this area, but this one's not doing that. So if you have a yellow undertone in your skin or if you're warm and you can't do anything pearl, pearl glow is actually a really nice shade. And then we are gonna take this down the nose bridge. Little on the tip of the nose right here. A little bit on the cupid's bow, just a tad bit right on the forehead. Something extra, not necessary, we are going to bake right under where we applied the contour. This is just going to further the illusion that I'm a malnourished sea witch. Today's lip combo of choice is the Bite Beauty Mousse Bouge Lipstick in the shade Squid Ink. And then in the center, I'm going to apply the Milk Cosmetics Blitz Lipstick. Now these ones are just blue and green, kind of going along with the theme of my eyeshadow today. All right, you guys, this is the completed look. Now, the lipstick combination, uh, you guys know I love the Mouge Bouge lipsticks by Bite Beauty. They are so good. I never really talk much about the Melt lipsticks, but they are very, very pigmented. They kind of smell like crayons, but they are so, so pretty, and they photograph beautifully. That's another thing that I feel like not a lot of people talk about about lipsticks. They photograph so nice. They make your lips look so good, I swear. So I'm really loving this lip combination and how it kind of ties in with the eye look. Everything that I used today was just beautiful to work with. I think the one thing I was skeptical about was definitely the loose powder because when I applied it and then when I brushed it off, it did look a little cakey, but then since it's really hot, and I started to sweat. It started to actually look really nice on the skin. I haven't used setting spray at all. I don't really have any, actually I do have a couple setting sprays. Let me just use one real quick. I have a Make a Revolution hydrating spray here. Now, I don't know how this smells like, so I guess it's a smell test because I'm not gonna do a wear test today. That sent me to third grade for some weird reason. That sent me to a classroom. This smells like a classroom. 
So I hope you guys all enjoyed my full face of first impressions and this really nice bold look. Some of you guys really do love my bold looks and some of you guys actually despise them. Some of you guys still want me to do brown smoky eyes every week. But here I love to just expand my creativity and just do things that are fresh, new, and fun. So I hope you guys all enjoy this look here and I will see you guys later. And watch out for some back to school videos. I'll leave some suggestions down below because I will be filming it later this week. And as always, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Peace out, Girl Scouts.